Good morning. Today is the feast of St. Gregory the Great, who was born in Rome in the year 540 and died in the year 604. He was well-educated and well-placed in society. Gregory's mother, Sylvia, took religious vows upon the death of her husband, and three of his aunts also entered into religious life. Pope Felix III was his great-great-grandfather. His conversion to monastic life in the year 574 was not sudden, but grew from a lifelong conflict between his personal desire for contemplative purity and the public duty to serve others in the midst of worldly affairs. Renouncing the secular life, Gregory established a monastery in Rome. He then founded six more monasteries on family estates in Sicily. In the year 590, at the age of 50, he was elected Pope, taking office unwillingly. He, he succeeded Pelagius II, who had succumbed to the plague. Gregory lived in a time of perpetual strife with invading Lombards and difficult relations with the East. Gregory was direct and firm. He removed unworthy priests from office forbade taking money from many services, and he emptied the papal treasury to ransom prisoners of the Lombards and to care for persecuted Jews and victims of the plague and famine. He is known for reform of the liturgy and for strengthening respect for doctrine. His book, Pastoral Care on the Duties and Qualities of a Bishop, was read for centuries after his death. He described bishops mainly as physicians, whose primary duties were preaching and enforcement of discipline. His description of bishops as physicians fits well with Pope Francis's description of the church as a field hospital. In his down-to-earth preaching, Gregory was skilled at applying the daily gospel to the needs of his listeners. Gregory was content to be a monk, but he willingly served the church in other ways when asked. Called the Great, Gregory has been given a place with Augustine, Ambrose, and Jerome as one of the four key doctors of the Western Church. Today's readings speak to Gregory's life. The letter to the Corinthians speaks to his role as a doctor of the church. It states, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. Living in a difficult time, Gregory chose to seek and follow the wisdom of God and not the wisdom of this world. The Gospel reading from, from Luke describes the call of the first disciples. When Jesus asked Simon Peter to put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch, Peter obeyed. Amazed at the great catch of fish, Peter, James, and John brought their boats to the shore left everything and began to follow him. Gregory, in a similar way, left behind the commercial world and responded to the call of God to become a monk. Later, he set aside his personal preferences in order to serve the needs of the church as Pope. May we be willing to resist the wisdom of this world as Gregory did in order to come to know the wisdom of God. May we also be willing to dedicate our lives to serving God by responding wholeheartedly to his call, just as Gregory did.